Welcome to another edition of ProSoft Technology Video Training. The PLX51 DF1 ENI router is designed to aid in the process of integrating newer hardware platforms that support Ethernet IP to existing DF1 networks. The PLX51 router can facilitate peer-to-peer -peer communications between PLCs or SCADA systems on Ethernet and DF1, as well as enable uploading and downloading programs to those PLCs for those platforms. If peer-to-peer -peer functionality is all you need for your application, we also offer the PLX51 DF1 MSG Messenger, which is only for peer-to-peer -peer communication. Today, we'll be covering how to set up the PLX51 gateway in scheduled mode. In this configuration, our gateway will act as a master on the DF1 network, scheduling DF1 device reads and writes, and then exchanging that data with one or more Logix controllers. I'll be using the PLX51 DF1 ENI router for this training session, but the configuration process is the same for the PLX51 DF1 MSG Messenger. We'll cover downloading and installing ProSoft PLX50 configuration utility software, creating a new project for our gateway, configure the PLX51 for both the EIP and DF1 networks, and use the scheduled mode to enable communication between a DF1 slave and our Logix controller. Let's begin. The first thing that we need to do is download and install the ProSoft PLX50 configuration utility software from the ProSoft technology website. This is a free application that is used to configure the PLX51 module and will allow you to do all the necessary configurations and mapping to make the module an integral and useful part of your program. Once we have the files downloaded, install the PLX50 configuration utility to your PC by following the prompts. When it's done, we'll open up the configuration utility and open a new project. The first time you connect the PLX51 to your network, you'll need to launch the DHCP server and assign it an IP address on your subnet. It's this button here in the menu bar, and there is our gateway. Click Assign, and on the window that opens, I'll enter in an IP address that I know is available on the local network, and click OK. The bar should turn green. This lets you know that the gateway has accepted the IP address and is now connected. So we can close this window. Next, right-click on the New Project under the Project Explorer and select Add. On the Add New Device window, select which gateway you have. I'll select the DF1 router and click OK. We then come to the Main Configuration window. You can see that we have five tabs at the top. The General and Serial DF1 tabs encompass the basic configuration for the gateway, and the other tabs will only be enabled depending on what mode you select. On the General tab, you can give the gateway an instance name and a description if you like. You then enter the IP address. Click the Browse button to the right of the address field to bring up the Target Browser, where you can see all the PLX50 gateways on your network. Select your DF1 module. It will have the IP address that you just assigned. Click OK and the IP will appear in the address field. We then come to the operating mode selector. With the DF1 router, we have four modes available. With the DF1 messenger, you'll only have two. I'll set my gateway to scheduled mode. This will activate the DF1 scheduled tab, which we'll get to in just a bit. Moving on, we'll click on the Serial DF1 tab. This is where we configure the DF1 side of our gateway. It contains all the typical DF1 network settings. You want everything to match the settings of the DF1 device that you're connecting to. So for protocol, I'll select full duplex, baud rate will be 9600, parity will be none, I'll set the error detection to CRC, embedded responses, uh, retry limits, and timeouts, just set to whatever you need. The reply message wait is intended for situations where some older legacy controllers, if the response comes back too quickly, they'll miss it. So you can add a slight delay to responses to ensure that the controller is able to process it. I'll just leave it at 50 milliseconds. There are a few other options available. Node address is relevant for certain modes where it's possible for the module to appear as more than one node. 
Uh, enable store and forward is only relevant if you're using the DF1 radio modem protocol. Now we'll move on to the DF1 schedule tab. We'll begin by specifying our Logix controller that we'd like to connect to. We'll give it a name, something that'll help you identify what controller this is. For IP address, you can just click the Browse button to use the target browser to find the IP and select the controller that you want. If you have more than one controller that you'd like to map, you can go ahead and add up to eight. We'll move to the scan configuration, and this is where we can set our scan rates. As you can see, there are four scan intervals, each of which is configurable. When we get to the mapping portion below, you can assign what scan interval you want to use. So for crucial data, you can refresh the data more frequently, and for less crucial data, or for things that change slowly, you can set a slower scan rate. At the bottom, under the Logix Tag Mapping, you specify the nodes and data files that you want to map to tags in the controller. So you would set the Logix function, a read or write command, and this would be from the master's perspective. Set the scan interval that you want to use. For device type, you would select either a SLC or PLC5. And in this instance, SLC will apply to all types of slicks as well as MicroLogix controllers. Next, you would specify the destination node and data address. You can actually specify down to the word level in the DF1 device that you want to read or write to. Enter the number of elements for the command. The target name corresponds to the Logix controllers identified above, and then the target tag is where the data will actually come from. Simply enter the tag name that you want to assign. You can also browse the controller, assuming it's online, and select the tags that you want. And that should do it. We'll click the Apply button, and now the configuration should be ready to download to the gateway. When you're ready, just right-click on the PLX51 in the Project Explorer view and select Download. The module will receive the configuration and reboot. Now is a good time to save your project. If all the configuration information was entered properly, your Logix controller should now be able to read and write to your DF1 slave devices. We have more videos covering the other configuration modes for various applications. If you have any questions or would like more information about the PLX51 DF1 ENI and MSG gateways, use the link in the description to go to its product page or feel free to give us a call.